This is an example of how we're going to estimate our cash flow at the beginning of the project, during the project, and at the end of the project using Excel for capital budgeting purposes. So let's go through our simple case study. Our project announcement. On 1st of April 2024, Pioneer Limited announced its intention to build a state-of-the-art project to increase its production of chocolate. Feasibility study. In late 2023, Pioneer Limited conducted a detailed feasibility study for its new chocolate project, costing $10,000. As you see here, I highlighted all the numbers in yellow, and I will take all these numbers and we're going to put them in Excel. In Excel, I will put them in red, which means these numbers were given, and then all our calculations will be done in black. To assess market demand and financial viability, guiding their strategic decision on the project. Initial investment. The new chocolate project has a five-year useful life. In 2024, the new chocolate project's initial investment is $100,000 for building construction, $80,000 for purchasing essential machines, production assets, and installation costs. Depreciation. The new chocolate project's building has a 20-year life, and the machines have a five-year tax life. Rental income loss. Pioneer Limited owns land that can be used for the new chocolate project. The land is currently leased to another company for $5,000 per annum. If the new chocolate project is not built, Pioneer Limited will continue the lease agreement. Revenue projections. Starting operations in 2025, initial revenue of the new chocolate project are expected at $60,000 with a projected annual growth of 3%. Operating costs. Variable costs are projected at 12% of sales and fixed operating costs of $8,000 annually. Maintenance expenses. Maintenance expenses are $3,000 in 2025 with a projected annual growth of 2%. Resale value. Pioneer Limited assumes that the new chocolate project buildings can be sold for $15,000 in 2029 after five years. The resale value of the machines is $5,000 in 2029. Working capital. If the board approves the new chocolate project, Pioneer Limited anticipates that it will require inventory to increase to a level of $10,000 today, 2024, compared with the existing amount of $6,000 in 2023. In addition, accounts payable is expected to increase by $5,000 to $12,000. Further, the account receivables balance will increase from the current level of $4,000 in 2023 to $6,000 in 2024. Tax rate. Let's assume that a tax rate of 30% per annum. What we need to do is, for initial cash flow, calculate the cash flows at the start of the project. Operational cash flows, calculate the annual cash flows over the lifetime of the project. Terminal cash flow, calculate the cash flows at the end of the project. Let's go through our Excel file. Here we have our given data in red, and then we're going to calculate it here. So let's start with feasibility study. We know that feasibility study is an example of sunk cost. Therefore, it will not be included. So let's put it here in dark red. We're not going to choose it. Our new chocolate project will have five years economic lifetime. So we started with today, which is year 2024, and then we have five years. What will be the cash flow at the start of the project? So here we have our building construction costs. So we'll say equal building construction costs. And what's our cost? Our cost is a cash outflow. So therefore we'll put negative and we'll put here $100,000. Then we have machines and installation costs. So we'll say here equal machines and installations cost. And then we'll say equal negative and they choose this number. Then we would like to get our a change in working capital. And please remember, here we estimate our incremental cash flow, which means the cash flow of this new project only. Therefore, how are we going to get the cash flow for this new project only? I need to get the cash flow of the existing firm with the project minus the existing firm without the project. And that's why we need to get the change in working capital. Note the total working capital in 2024, but the change in working capital. And in our working capital here, what do we have? We have inventory, we have accounts payable, and we have accounts receivable. Therefore, we will write here, change in inventory. 
We know that if we're going to buy raw material, it will be cash inflow, outflow. It will be cash outflow. And that's why we need to start with negative. Open bracket. It shows the inventory in this year, 2024, minus the previous year, 2023. Close bracket. So this means that our change in inventory will be 4,000. It's outflow, and that's why we put a negative, which means we purchased more inventory. Then we have here our accounts payable. But as you check here, we already have what? It changes in accounts payable. It's already calculated for us. Therefore, we're going to write here change in accounts payable. And we'll say equal. How when we talk about liabilities, if it increases, it will be positive. If it decreases, it's negative. And that's why I will use the same number. So it will be here, changes in accounts payable. Then we have it changes in account receivables. So receivables is current assets. So we have a negative relationship between it changes in current assets and it changes in cash. The four will start with negative sign and we'll choose account receivables in 2024 minus account receivables in the previous year. Please note that in some other case studies, you could have more items here. And that's why you need to check your case study carefully. Which item should be included? Which item should be excluded, such as sunk costs? And then here you might have additional rows which don't need to use them. But here, just to make sure that we can see all the calculations in one screen, I made sure that you can see everything here, and that's why I didn't have any empty rows. Therefore, what will be our total cash flows at the beginning of the project? We need to get the sum. So we know that it will be negative 181,000. Then let's go through our second stage. Calculate the cash flows over the life of the project. So we need to start with our sales. What's our sales here? Our sales in 2025, the first year of operation, is 60,000. Then I know that our sales will grow every year by 3%. So in year two, which is 2026, we'll say equal our sales multiplied by open bracket, one plus, choose our growth rate of 3%. But when I drag, I would like to fix this growth rate. Therefore, we need to put the dollar sign by pressing F4 or function F4. Close bracket, enter, and then from this little box, drag. So we calculated our sales. Then we need to calculate our variable cost. It was mentioned in the question here that our variable cost is what? 12% from our sales. So we'll say here equal 60,000 times 12% and we need to fix this cell. And that's why we're gonna put the dollar sign. Enter. And remember that our variable cost is a revenue or expense. It's an expense. Therefore, I need to start with a negative sign. It's cash outflow. And then drag. Then we need to estimate our fixed cost. It was given in the question that our fixed cost is constant at 8,000. Therefore, I write here negative 8,000, put the dollar sign, and then I will drag. Then we have our lost lease. This is an example of opportunity cost, and that's why it should be included in our question here. So. The existing firm, Pioneer Limited, has a land and they lease this land to a third party, another firm. And that's why if they're going to build the project, they will use this land. So they are going to lose this rent. Therefore, we need to say equal negative. What's our lost lease? 5,000. Therefore, I write it here as a negative 5,000. And then we can put here the dollar sign. And then we drag. Then we have our maintenance expense. What will be our maintenance expense? It's an expense, it's a cash outflow, so we'll start with a negative, and we'll write here 3,000. It will grow every year by 2%, so I'll choose my maintenance here, times, open bracket, one plus, 2%, put the dollar sign, close bracket, enter, 
and then from this little box drag. Then we need to estimate our pre tax. Pre tax cash flow. So, what will be our pre tax cash flow? Let's get the sum here. So, this will give us here for the first year 36,800 and then drag. Then we will pay taxes. So what will be our taxes? It will be our pre-tax cash flow multiplied by our tax rate of 30%. I would like to fix the cell of the tax rate, put the dollar sign by pressing F4 or function F4, enter, and then drag. Then we need to estimate our after-tax cash flow. So what will be our after-tax cash flow? Remember here, our taxes here are cash outflow. Therefore, we will put here what? A negative sign. And then drag. Then what will be our after-tax cash flow? Get the sum. Then drag. Then we have depreciation tax savings. So we will benefit from the depreciation tax savings from the buildings and machinery and installation. So right here, buildings and machines and installation. Therefore, what will be here our depreciation tax savings for our buildings? So we need to get our depreciation multiplied by tax rate. How are we going to calculate the depreciation? It is the cost divided by its economic lifetime. So what is the cost of the building? 100,000 divided by what's its economic lifetime? 20 years multiplied by our tax rate, 30%. So this will be our depreciation tax savings for buildings. Let's do the same for machines and installation. What will be the depreciation of machines? Get the machines and installation cost divided by its economic lifetime of five years multiplied by tax rate. Then for the second year, I will say equal. And then I will highlight them and then I will drag. Therefore, what will be our total incremental cash flow over the project lifetime? We'll say equal sum and get the sum of our after tax cash flow and then highlight our depreciation tax savings. Then drag from this little box. So this will be our cash flow during the project lifetime. Then we'd like to know what will be the cash flow at the end of the project. So let's start with the sale of buildings. So we will sell the building for how much? If you're going to check here, the building's resale price at the end of the project after five years in 2029 is 15,000. It's cash inflow. Then we'd like to estimate what will be the tax effect. So this part here is mainly about capital gain tax. If we sell the building above its book value at the end of the project, it means that we made a gain. Therefore, we need to pay more taxes. So it will be negative. Why? Because it's cash outflow. But what if our sale price at the end of the project will be lower than its book value? Therefore, this means that we had a capital loss. Consequently, we need to pay lower taxes, which means our taxes will be positive. Let's check here. Let's get our tax effect. How are we going to calculate the tax effect? It's equal the tax rate multiplied by the book value of our asset minus the sale price. So let's calculate it here. Equals, what is the tax rate? 30% times, open bracket. What is the book value? In order to get the book value of any asset, 
get the annual depreciation multiplied by the remaining lifetime of the project. So what's our annual depreciation for building? The depreciation is, it shows the cost of the building divided by its economic lifetime. So this is our annual depreciation multiplied by open bracket. What is the remaining economic lifetime? This building will last for how many years? 20 years. Minus, I use the machine, or I use this building, or I use this asset for how long? Five years. Close bracket. So this will give us the book value of the buildings. Minus, what is the sale of the building? 15,000. Close bracket. So here, it will give us what? 18,000. So why do we have it here as a positive? It means that we have a capital loss. Why? Let me take here the formula of the book value of building. Let me write it here. Equal. What is the book value of the building? 75,000. We will sell it for what? 15,000. We made a gain or loss. We made a loss. And that's why we will pay lower taxes. And that's why here it's positive. Then let's look at our sale of machines. We will sell the machine for how much? Let's check here. $5,000. Then we'd like to know what will be the tax effect. So I will copy it. The tax effect is equal to what? Tax rate, 30%, times the book value of the machine. How are we going to get the book value of the machine? Get annual depreciation multiplied by the remaining economic lifetime. What's annual depreciation? Get the cost of the machine divided by its economic lifetime, which is five years. Multiplied by what is the economic lifetime of the machine? Five years. I used it for how long? Five years. So we could tell that I have a machine that will last for five years and I used it for five years. So what does it mean? It means its book value is zero. Therefore, I know that this part of our formula for the book value is equal to zero minus our sale price of $5,000. So I know that the value of my machine after five years is equal to zero. I will sell it for 5,000. So this means that I made a capital gain. Therefore, we need to pay taxes based on this capital gain. Therefore, I know that here, the number will be negative. What do I mean by negative? We had a capital gain. Therefore, we need to pay more taxes. Then what we need to do next is, we have here a change in working capital. So we need to get exactly the same, which means a change in inventory, a change in accounts payable, a change in account receivables, but I will have the opposite sign. Why? Let's assume that we purchased the raw material of a certain number. Then once we shut down the project, what shall we do with this raw material? We need to sell them. And that's why it will be the opposite sign. Therefore, I will come here and I'll say equal negative to get the opposite sign. I like this one. And then from this little box, drag. Then say equal, get the sum. Highlight all of them. Then what will be our total incremental cash flow? So I'll say equal. It shows the cash flow at year zero plus during the project plus at the end of the project. And then from this little box, drag. Then 